There are several unit testing frameworks available for .NET. I've listed a few here. We have MS Test from Microsoft, which is integrated with Visual Studio. We also have NUnit, MBUnit, XUnit.NET. Each of these frameworks have their own pros and cons. In most of the organizations I've been working with, I've used MS Test. MS Test is integrated with Visual Studio. This means we don't have to install any third-party tools. I must also tell you, once you've learned how to use one of these unit testing frameworks, it's not too hard to learn the others. The concepts are still the same. The way we implement them may be slightly different depending on the framework that we choose. Now let's focus on how to create our first unit test using MS Test unit testing framework that comes with Visual Studio. There are three simple steps. The first step is to add a unit test project to your solution. The second step is to decorate the class that contains test methods with test class attribute. And the final step is to decorate the test method with test method attribute. So let's look at all these three steps in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So we have a solution here. The name of the solution is Calculator. And the solution at the moment contains two projects. So this project right here, Calculator.Web, this is an ASP.NET Web application project. And Calculator.Library, this is a class library project. And if you look at this calculator.web, we have a single ASPX page here, calculatorpage.aspx. If we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. So it provides us the option to enter a value for numerator and denominator. When we click the divide button, we get the result that is the quotient displayed in a variable. Now the way we have implemented this is like this. So when we click the divide button on this page, we are calling the divide method that is present within the calculator class. And if you look at this calculator class, this is present in calculator.library namespace. So if you look at the references right here, notice within the web project, we have added a reference to calculator.library project, which is our class library project. That has the logic to divide two numbers. This is the same function that we looked at in our previous video session. Now what we want to do is unit test this divide method. So the first step to do that is to add a unit test project to our solution. So I'm going to right click on our solution, add a new project. And I have selected test under Visual Studio, I mean under Visual C Sharp. And I selected unit test project. And I'm going to call this calculator.test. Click OK. So this should add a unit test project to a solution. And look at what it has done. It has created a class file, unit test onecs And that's the name of our class right here. Now I am going to change this name to calculator test. So this is going to contain all calculator tests. So I'm going to change that to that name. And when I do that, it's asking me if I want to change the name of the class as well. So I'm going to click S. Yes, so it changes the name of the class as well. Now look at this. The calculator test class is decorated with test class, which is going to contain all our test methods. And the test method itself is decorated with test method attribute. Now, look at this. By default, it has called it test method one, which is not a meaningful name. Now, we are going to use this method to test the divide method, right? So for now, I'm going to call this test underscore divide. There are naming conventions that people follow to name their unit tests when developing real world applications. We'll discuss those naming conventions in a later video. For now, to keep things simple, I'm going to name it test underscore divide. Now, to create the unit test itself, we follow these three A's pattern, arrange, act, and assert. Within the arrange section, we initialize objects and set the values of data that we want to pass to the method being tested. And during the act section, we invoke the method being tested, and the assert section verifies that the method being tested behaves as expected. So let's look at these three sections in detail. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So first, arrange section. So this section initializes the variables and objects that we want to pass to the method that is being tested. So I'm going to create a variable here. I'm going to call it expected. And I'm going to expect a value of 5. So I'm going to store that in this variable. And I'm going to create two more variables of type 
integer. So the first one is going to be numerator. I'm going to initialize that to 20. And the second one is going to be denominator. And I'm going to initialize this to a value of 4. So that's our arrange section. And within our act section, we're going to invoke the method that we want to test. So the method that we want to test is actually present in this project, calculator.library. And our unit test is present in calculator.test project. So within this unit test, you know, at the moment, we haven't added a reference to calculator.library project. That means the divide method is not available. So let's go ahead and add a reference to calculator.library project. So I'm going to right click on references add reference and then I'm going to select this project section and from there select calculator.library so that's going to add a reference to our calculator.library project now within the act section I'm going to use calculator.library that's the namespace within that namespace we have our calculator class and within that class we have our static method divide going to call that and it expects values for two parameters numerator and denominator which we have in these two variables so I'm going to pass those two variables numerator and denominator so this method is going to return an integer value and I'm going to store that return value in another variable and I'm going to call it actual so we get the actual value when those two numbers are divided in this variable and we have the value that we are expecting in this variable Okay, so finally, within our assert section, we're going to verify if the method behaves as expected. And to do that, I'm going to use the assert class. This class has got several static methods. For now, I'm going to use r equal method and check if the expected value, which is 5, is actually equal to the actual value you know, whatever we get when that method completes execution.